This is a long video. This has got to be the longest video we've ever done. Oh my goodness. I interviewed a lot of people at this show. Anyways, this is part two. This is part two of Blade 2022. I hope you're enjoying yourself. We're getting all kinds of inside scoop and all kinds of different knife makers and other manufacturers. Stick around till the end. It's great stuff coming up. Welcome back to Blade Show Part 2. Welcome to day two to Blade Show 2022. I'm here with Kurt with Ivory Jacks. We started Ivory Jacks 45 years ago wow. with my wife. I was born and raised in Fairbanks, Alaska, and, and uh, that's how I came across doing all these Arctic materials. We call them Arctic exotics. And they're very, very difficult to get, but if you come to Ivory Jack, it's very, very easy. We got lots of them. Where do you get them? Everything is sourced from St. Lawrence Island in Alaska and from the mainland in Alaska. It depends on what type of material we're talking about, but all the ivories and any walrus uh, bones all come from St. Lawrence Island, and we buy them directly from the Alaskan natives. They're Siberian Yupik natives, and they've lived on St. Lawrence Island for over 2,000 years and they've lived their uh, subsistence lifestyle where they utilize uh, walrus as a source of protein, as well as seals and salmon. Then they also eat berries and other things, but they live a total subsistence lifestyle where they, they're hunter-gatherers, basically, to this day. And you can imagine there's a lot of leftover bones. After all that time, supper bones, that's what we call them. Yeah. Native Alaskans, if, if they want to get in touch with you or if other people, knife makers, because every knife maker around is going to want to call you and get some of this for knife handle material, how would they connect with you? Contact me through our website, www.ivoryjacks.com. They can call our offices in uh, Washington State at 425-486-4218. Uh, that's probably the two best ways. You can also email me personally, ivoryjack, I-V-O-R-Y-J-A-C-K, at I-V-O-R-Y-J-A-C-K-S dot com. Makes it easy. There you go. Can we take a look and you can kind of explain? I'll get behind the camera. All right. And you can kind of me. explain to us what we're looking at. Absolutely. This is the creme de la creme of the Arctic exotics that yeah. we sell. This is fossil walrus ivory. A lot of these pieces are not just fossil walrus ivory, but they're fossil walrus ivory artifacts that were used by the Eskimos hundreds and even thousands of years ago. This piece happens to be a sled runner and it's walrus ivory. It makes wonderful knife handles the best and we have a lot of different artifacts this was a a fishing weight you can see where they hung it for fishing wow just a lot of these beautiful pieces but the the most important part of fossil walrus ivory depending on the soil that it laid in depends makes it the color that it is now and you can see some of it gets into the blues and browns. Often the it minerals in the ground. It depends on the minerals that it was lying in. Some of them laid in sand and they don't take on a lot of color. Yeah. Some of them <laughs> laid in Vivianite. And Vivianite is what gives us these beautiful blue colors. Yeah. But it, they say to get this color, the material has to be 2,000 years old or better. Wow. So they've been laying around a long time. But when you see a smooth surface like this, it comes from the sand. Mm -hmm. And it's rolled around in the bottom, and that's what it is. Basically, tumble, uh, nature's tumbler, that's what gives it that shape. Yeah. But the ones like these, 
are found in the soil. Yeah. These are fossil walrus teeth. Wow. They're also ivory. One of the hallmarks of ivory is there's no porousness whatsoever. Yeah. All bone is porous. No ivory has any porousness whatsoever, which is what makes it preserved so for such a long period of time. Mm. Now this is a this is a fossil walrus usik. It's a penis bone from a walrus. Yeah. And knife makers love this stuff. Uh, we make a lot of knives using it ourselves. It's very very hard to get. Um, really really interesting bone because it has something you can talk about when you're selling your product. Yeah. People love this. Now, in addition to that, we also sell other Arctic exotics besides just ivory. We sell antler. Uh, we sell sheep horns. These are uh, doll sheep horn that come from the Arctic. They're hard to get. They're a great product. Yeah. We use fossil walrus jaw bones. Very, very dense, very, very dense, heavy material, but it still has the porousness to it. You can kind of see it. Yeah. Here's, a, here's a whole jaw bone. You can see where the teeth fit. Uh, oh, yeah, walrus, the teeth went. Yeah, walrus live on a diet of pretty much 100% shellfish, and so yeah. they eat a lot of clams. I personally have had I've eaten walrus. It's, I love it myself. It's just wonderful, and it, it wow. tastes like clams. Wow. And then we sell a lot of moose antler. One of yeah. the hallmarks of moose antler, uh, this section, we call it the beam yeah. or the shank, is this part of it has very, very little porousness also. Really good. We make a lot of jewelry, a lot of knife handles out of this. Mm -hmm. These are the moose tips. They just make a nice handle, just hold by themselves. Yeah. You can see it. I mean, it's shaped like a handle. We sell a lot of these. Yeah. And then, these are not from the Arctic. These are elk. These come from Montana. Yeah. Sell a lot of elk. We also sell, which we don't have represented here, a lot of prehistoric woolly mammoth ivory Ooh. and prehistoric woolly mammoth teeth. We have a line of knives that we sell. Uh, mm -hmm. We use the Kershaw leeks, scallions, and chives, and we put mammoth ivory handles and mammoth tooth handles on them, mm -hmm. and they sell very, very well. We wholesale those to uh, lots of stores around the U.S., and especially in Alaska. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Great start to a second day here at the Blade Show 2022, and we're on to the next one. Follow us, guys. All we're right. back here at the Blade Show, of course. Where else will we be? This is day two, and I just happened to be going by, and I saw these amazing knives, and I realized I knew Stanley right here. Stanley Buzek. Hello. We've Richard. known each other for a long time. Yeah, several years. I think we may have a couple of your knives still in stock in, in the store. May um, have. We, we, we might still have a couple. Uh, you can certainly look at bcknife.com. If we have them, you'll see them there. But uh, you've been a knife maker for a long time. You make amazing knives. Uh, beautiful engraving, beautiful handle materials, beautiful everything in your craftsmanship is second to none. They're as buttery smooth as they can be. Uh, if you're looking for a great collectible handmade knife, something you can carry every day that's absolutely the best, this is the knife to get. Tell me, what brings you to the Blade Show and how long have you been doing this? Uh, started out making knives April of 2003 as a hobby and started out as I got my knife sharpened by a guy in a truck stop that had the paper wheels on a grinder. Yeah. And it's one of those bright ideas that uh, if he's got them, if somebody bound to sell them, and that's neat. So I started looking. I found Texas Knife Maker Supply. Yeah. Called him up. Yep, we got a set. Let's not be down there to pick them up. Downhill from there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, started out putting together kits. Uh -huh. Graduated from kids to grinding my own blade, stuff like that, and then uh, uh, moved, made many, many, many fixed blades over the years, and then found slip joint folders, and just it's just I fell in love with them. Wow. Uh, it's slip joints and lock backs are just my favorite knives to make. Um, I actually took Bill Ruppel's uh, Knife maker school probably 12 years ago now. Yeah. With him and Rusty Preston and uh, 
they've all been a tremendous help to me. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just got started and just went, like I said, just started simply walking into a place and going, oh, and all we're doing a knife nut. Yeah. So ever since, uh, my, I got my first knife when I was nine. Really? My dad bought me my first knife. It was one of those little red Barlow, red handled Barlows that used to be on every cardboard card in every hardware store in the world, sure. you know? And carried a knife ever since, mm -hmm. and always been a knife nut. And then when I walked in there and found out you can make your own knife, it's just, okay, yeah. I'm in. Yeah. And, uh, so uh, it just went from there. Yeah. And a lot, of, a lot of help from a lot of good makers, and I, it's, I'm passionate. I'm passionate about my knives. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessive about my knives, yeah. and and uh, uh, I just love doing it. Uh, I'm if I'm not in the shop for one or two days, I start getting antsy. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, your knives are are so well made, second to none. They're really, Thank you. Really nicely done. Thank you. The attention to detail, folks, is just absolutely amazing. Uh, you tend to gravitate towards traditional folders. Yes. Is there a reason for that? Or is that that's your uh, favorite? That, that, is, that is just my favorite. Um, I, I'm a, you know, I love traditional. I started out, I made some liner locks, frame locks, and all that when I first started making folders. Yeah. And they just never really did anything for me. Just it, and the, a slip, each, a slip joint, or a, lock, each, a slip joint especially, each one of them has their own um, attitude, mm -hmm. characteristics. Because the difference in the steel, even though you're under constant spring load. Sure. So, and every piece of steel is just a little bit different. So every knife, the spring load, is just a little bit different. And you have to work with it. So all of them have their own little intricacies and quirks that make them fun to build to operate as smoothly and perfectly as they do. And to get everything everything flush, stopped out and all, it just, it, the attention, I'm a bit OCD. Yeah. And so the attention to detail is, is something I gravitate to. And that's, yeah. it, you'll notice with most of my knives that uh, my attention to detail is, is, is mm. Pretty high, pretty high end. Well, of it. you know, if, if, if y'all out there, if you carry a traditional um, folder that uh, is mass produced, you know, what we're talking about here is a whole different world. It's actually pretty hard right now to get a traditional folder that's mass produced that's any good at all. With yes. this, you're going to get high end everything, but the feel of it, it's got a soul. You know, it, it really, a knife, when it's handmade like this, has a soul. It's a whole different world. It is. Uh, it, it, people really don't, and I get a real kick. I've had people walk up to my table here in my lock backs, and they'll uh, they'll open my lock back, and it'll click, and they just smile. Yeah. And that's that's worth it right there. That's that's the whole, that's what we, a lot of it, what we do is for the wow. Yeah. The, the light, the, the way people's eyes light up when they, oh, yeah. when, Wow, that's so smooth, and their eyes light up, and that that is worth more than, uh, you know. Oh yeah. And that's one reason we do it. Well, and, they look on our shelves, they look at one of your knives, and they say, "Why is it so much?" And I simply hand it to them and tell them to open it. And once they do, you can tell right away that what you're getting is very, very high quality. Stanley here is one of the best. I highly recommend. I highly recommend him. Got to take care of the customers. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Highly recommend, listen, if you're looking for a knife, a custom made, made to your order, kind of pocket knife, traditional folder, you couldn't, you couldn't go wrong here. You know, and, and, and it's kind of like, it's the knife your grandpa carried. Yeah, it really is. It's the knife your grandpa carried. Oh, you and have one over there in a stag that is just, yeah, man, they're, I they're tell you what. Drop dead gorgeous. You know, and, and it used to be production knives had beautiful oh, stag. Yes. Yeah, I had a, uh, Uncle Henry was my first knife, it was a Stockman, and I got it when I was eight. And I, I tell you, I, I remember that knife to this day, and that's one of the reasons why I absolutely love a beautiful stag on a knife. I do too. I, stag, stag, and and good stag. And my one of my favorite hand materials is mammoth ivory. Oh, I yeah. love working with yeah. mammoth ivory, it's and it, 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 you know, it, it's been around, it's been hanging around at least ten thousand years, <laughs> yeah. and and it it, all, it also has its own soul. It and, does. And and it, it, the 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 iridescence of the minerals in the in the oh. tusk make it really show off and that's another my two favorite handle materials is, is stag and, and mammoth 
I, I'm with you, 100. percent And it's, they're both tough materials. Yes. So they're going to hold up. It's, they're tough you materials. Know, you, they're going to hold. Well, like, okay, man. If they, people say, man, but yeah. how, how how will it hold up? Well, it's been in the ground for 10,000 years. <laughs> yeah. It's bound to hold up pretty good. It's going to hold up really well. <laughs> well, you know, if you're looking for a work knife, you pay. You're going to pay money for a real handmade knife, no matter what, no matter who you get it from. Anything good, you're going to pay money for it. But I have a lot of folks that say, well, I would never carry that knife. No, that's the knife you want to carry. Sure. that's the knife that's going to last you a lifetime and your children a lifetime. This that's, is a multi-generational knife. It, I, I tell them, this, the stuff is heirloom quality. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you take care of it, minimum, you know, all the joints mm -hmm. and, and take care of it and you'll pass it to your grandkids. Yep. And yep. then they'll carry it and go, you know, this is my grandpa's knife. Absolutely. And, and that... That family tradition means a whole lot, and and that's it's one reason I like building traditional knives. Excellent, and, and it's collectible too. And collectible. I mean, if you're going to collect knives, why collect production knives? Yeah. Collect. I collect really handmade. nicely made handmade knives, and uh, you know you're going to know that your money's going to a knife maker that really cares about what he's doing. How do they get in touch with you if they want to get a knife from you? Directly? Uh, you can you can find me uh, on Instagram at S Music Knives. You can find me on Facebook at S Music Knives. Um, my website is sbusicknives.com, and uh, all my contact information is listed on my website um, under my contact page. I've got I've got three pages of gallery on my website. You can go through and see some of the stuff I've built over the last five or six, seven years. Um, you can get in touch with me that way, and usually, you know, if you find my phone number, text me, call. You know, I'm I'm open all the time to any kind of contact. So. Or you can call Bear Claw. Or you can call that's it. Call 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 Bear Claw and 432-253-3660. 432-253-3660. And uh, you can ask us. We'll send you right to them. Or we we may have, like I said, we may have a couple that are in stock. I'm pretty sure we do. And you can find that at bcknife.com. Or come on down to a store in Midland on uh, Midkiff Road in the Loop. If you're in Midland, you know where that is, next to Hobby Lobby and Market Street. If you're not. <laughs> You're going to be online, or you can call us anytime. We'll be happy to help you out. Stanley, I appreciate it. It's nice, it's nice having you, Richard, you know, and, and uh, hopefully see you again real soon. I look forward to look it. Look forward to it. And uh, hopefully, you know, what I'm hoping is that you're, the show that you and uh, Jimmy are putting together for next year yeah. Yeah, up, up in West Texas. If you're going to be anywhere in the West Texas area, keep your eyes open for next fall because there may be a major, there may may be a major knife show happening with a whole bunch well, of good people makers we've, there. We've certainly been working on that. I was kind of keeping it a secret. Okay, but, I just, uh, I just, yeah, I just let the cat out of the bag. There, there may be a major knife maker show in in Midland coming up, so we're we're working on the business plan now. So stay tuned for that stanley it's really a pleasure always all good right to see always you. good to see you richard love your work thank and you and again if you're looking for a great custom knife this is one place you definitely want to call thank you thanks folks on to the next one all right folks we're back again with a new knife maker this one from texas as well we're, you know we're really getting into the texas knife makers here this is tanner from couch knives uh tell me about your company what you do um uh, Tanner Couch, Couch Knives. I'm a part-time knife maker. Uh, I got started uh, about 10 years ago. Bill Rupel, the legend, Hall of Famer. That Taught was a lot the, of folks. That was that was the, the man that that, uh, that got me started. Pretty much helped me all the way, and and we got the the cartel going, and more people, you know, got our little group, and we it's just blown up and and made my knives better and better, and it's. To hear, you know, here we are today. Well, you know, we have a plethora of great traditional knife makers, handmade traditional knives in Texas. It's amazing how many people that he taught, and uh, you know, there's so many of us down there. And if you're looking for a great traditional knife, Texas is a great place to go. Absolutely. Uh, if people want to get in touch with you and get some of your knives or have a knife made for them, how do they get in touch with you? They can. Uh, the best way is on Instagram at Couch Knives on Instagram uh, or Tanner Couch uh, on Facebook. Uh, that's the easiest way. Message me uh, and we can work out the details and, and go from there. Mr. Couch, I appreciate your time. Thank appreciate you. Thank you. you. I hope you have a great show. Yes, sir. It's been a great, a lot of people here. Uh, been a great show so far and we got a, another day and a half of this and a lot of fun.
Blade Show 2022. Let's go see who else is here. Yeah, I need to grow a couple inches. <laughs> I think so. so. We're right here with Bobby House with B House Customs. <laughs> Tell you what, make some beautiful knives. Tell us about where you're at and how long you've been doing this. How'd you uh, get into it? I, uh, I'm from Pleasanton, Texas. I've been uh, making for just three years. Uh, Bill Ruppel is my uh, mentor, and we have a group called uh, Slip Joint Cartel, and there's like 16 of us, and we all kind of help each other, and uh, that's kind of where I got my background. I was a collector for 25 years, and then I started building just recently, well, four years, and I've, I've had very good success because of who I have around me. You know, I'm a sucker for a really nice slip joint, traditional slip joint. Yes, sir. Single blade, double blade, stag. Yes, sir. I, I, I love it. I mean, those those are my kind of knives. Yes, now, sir. Maybe I'm I'm old and I'm from another generation, but no. when I see a stag handled slip joint, it's, I tell you, traditional. You can't take traditional out of traditional. I mean, that's that's what that is, and we put our little take on it. They're not. Some people do exact replicas. I do not. I always put my flare on it or my twist on it, and uh, and it's my style, and that's what I like to do. I build what I want, not necessarily what the people want. I build what I want, and that's what I, I put out there. And it's been pretty good. You know, you mentioned a slip joint, basically a slip joint cartel that's right here in Texas, in the Texas yes, sir. area. Yes, sir. There's a bunch of us here that do those those slip joints, right? Yes, sir. And and kind of the father of all of that is... Well, we started, most of us have learned from Bill Ruppel, but Ticho West, Pat West, is the godfather of, of teaching everyone how to build it. He uh, He's retired now. Um, he taught Bill 34 years ago. Bill, one of the, one of the deals whenever Ticho or Pat uh, taught him, he said, now, the information's free. You just go out and you you give your information away, you help others, and Bill Ruppel has, he's lived by that. He just become Hall of Fame uh, today, and uh, it was a great or, uh, honor. Um, you know, he's the one that distilled all that in us, and then he's taken that, and then there's 16 of us, I think. There's a few new inductees uh, here, and we've formed this group, and we're very tight-knit. Um, we're we put it out there. Everybody knows who we are. Are they? They're learning who we are, mm -hmm. and we are a slip joint only. And we have a vast variety of what we do, but we're a tight knit group, and and it is about slip joints. And Bill wow. Ruppel's to to thank for that. Well, we're going to go talk to Bill. We're going to try and talk to him next if it's not too busy. So uh, we're going to try and do that. Now, if people want to get hold of you, they want you to build them a knife. And I would highly recommend that. How do they get in touch with you? I uh, I pretty much do Instagram. It's uh, B period house underscore custom underscore knives. And uh, that's pretty much what I, that's my outlet. And I post everything that I make on there. And uh, I do not take orders. I, I, I My books are closed. But. I do build knives and I put them out there if they're available or not. So there is, there's chance and I, can, I have a little bit of a waiting list, but that's the way I, I don't, I build for what I like and then I give it out to the public and I've had good reception with that and I don't have the pressure of building someone a specific knife. Yeah. You know, so that, that's worked for me. See him on Instagram. Yeah, see that's me on Instagram. B house underscore custom underscore knives. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, it's great to meet you out I here. I appreciate that. I'm here with Bill Ruppel, the, the person everybody is talking about. Every knife maker I go to here that's, that's in this knife maker cartel here out of Texas, right. they talk about you. Yeah. And I understand you just made the Blade... Um, Blade Magazine Cutlery Hall of Fame. Cutlery Hall of Fame. Yes. Now, for those of you that don't know, that's a big deal. It's a big deal to me, for sure. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. That's huge. That's yeah. absolutely huge. Thank well, you. you've taught so many people how to do this. Tell yeah. me how that started happening. Well, the, the, I'll, the fellow that taught me was Pat West. <clears throat> and uh, part of the rules were that he wouldn't charge me anything to teach me, but I had to pass it on. And uh, I don't know, I just... Uh, I enjoy that part of it. Yeah. You know, to me, the knife, knife making is awesome, mm -hmm. but it's about the people. You know, and that's what makes it special to me. You know, that's a big difference <laughs> between 
knives and a lot of other, other industries. Right. Is uh, you'll find a lot more knife guys willing to pass it on yes. and teach other people how to do it. We're a small uh, industry, really. We're, we're really a very are. small we're industry. Really Everybody knows each other. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what part of the industry you're in. We all know each other. We're all, you're in this for 20 all years. All friends. We're, yeah, we're all friends. <laughs> yeah. We're all friends. And we try and pass it forward. Because yeah. if we don't, it's right, an industry die. that'll die. It'll die. It'll so, die. so we pass it forward. We teach yeah. other people. Yes. And uh, you've done that. I mean, yes. You've had an exemplary <clears throat> career, not only just right. making knives, but teaching other people how to do this. Yeah, and yeah. these other slip joint makers we have down here in, in this area of Texas is just they're amazing knife makers. Yeah. I mean, they're second to none, aren't they? They are, and I, I demand excellence of them. I don't cut them any slack. Yeah? <laughs> you know, so if they got something wrong with the knife, I'm gonna point that out to them, you know, and so, but now they're doing that with me also. So yeah. we've all elevated each other throughout the years. And yeah, so it's, if you it's really want to learn, teach. Great. And if you, for a short history of the slip joint cartel. Yeah, yeah. If you don't mind, uh, it started right here at this table. Really? At this exact location. Mm -hmm. in, I believe it was 2018 when 14 of those guys I taught all made me a knife in my style and gave it to me in, in wow. recognition of me teaching them. Wow. And that was the birth of the slip joint cartel. And now we're the international slip joint cartel. We inducted Bruce Barnett from Australia in this weekend. I heard. So yeah, we got it going in Australia now too. That's, so. that's outstanding. Isn't that cool? I'm glad he was able to make it out this oh, year. Oh, me too. He's been me stuck too. in yeah, Australia he's, he's for a, a while. He's a very dear friend and a great guy. So. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Are you still making knives? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I brought 18 to this show. Wow. So yeah, I'm still act, very active at it. I, uh, my friend Johnny Stout told me one time that he couldn't imagine not making another knife. And that's, that's the way I feel. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just, uh, as long as I can walk out there and turn the machine on and step up to it, I'm going to keep doing it. Well, you know, folks, I would show you some of his knives, but they seem to be all gone. I don't own any. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you'd like to see some of his knives, where, where do we find your knives? You know, they're around the room. There's some of the dealers have them in their cases. Uh, you could go online and I tell you, if you go to Facebook and just go to Bill Ruppel, uh, I'm, I'm Bill all Ruppel, over. All Bill over Ruppel knife maker. Media. Yeah. 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 Do you have a website and, uh, by any chance? I, do, I used to, but when yeah. social media came along, it was like, it's easy, isn't it? Point, you yeah. know, you're really not necessary for all me. Right. But I do have one knife I, I would love to show you. Sure. At the Hall of Fame induction ceremony today, yeah. my sister-in-law gave me my very first knife that I made for my brother, no. who passed away a Kidding. few years ago. So that's that's the very first knife I ever made. Right there, that's, wow. that started it all. Look at that. And it kind of looks like it. It's a little yeah. rough, but uh, but Still. it was perfect. It that's was a my, great it was first, first knife. knife. Yeah. Let me let me show that to everybody here. I'll be careful with it. I uh, promise. You don't have to be careful. Right there. Look at that. I think that's, that's the only ripple knife I own. <laughs> very, very nice. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you talking with us. It's an honor. Yeah. If you want a knife from the master, this is the place to get it at. Find them online. Find them at Facebook. Sure. And uh, thank you so much, Bill. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Let's go on and see who we can find from here. So I'm here with Bubba Crouch out of Pleasanton, Texas. Yes, sir. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now this is another gentleman here from Texas, <laughs> flip joint guy, part of the cartel. Yes, sir. Uh, tell me about how you got started in this business. Uh, I started building knives in 2009, and uh, my neighbor uh, on the ranches next to us, uh, Pat West, mm -hmm. actually the, he, he's a gentleman that got got all of it started down in South Texas building knives, and he actually taught Bill Rupel. And Pat was retiring, and I kind of got into it, and then. And, and so Pat talked to Bill, and Bill started helping me, and you know, and Bill's helped a bunch of us guys down there now. So, you know, and, uh, I, I was I've been talking to the guys, and it looks like I'm going to have to come down there, yeah, and actually do a video from down there and see how y'all do. You bet. Too. There's probably in a 30 mile radius, you can probably you know go to eight or nine different shops. So yeah. it's yeah, it's good. Yeah, that'll make a great video. You bet. So you've been making knives for a while now. You you gravitate towards the slip joints. Yes, sir. The traditional slip joints. Yes, sir. If somebody wanted to get one of your knives, and folks were showing them here, I'm sure 
if someone wants to get one of your knives, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, you can call me my cell phone or text me at 210-846-6890, or you can hit me on Instagram. I, I don't have a website. I just kind of do Instagram, so I am a part-time maker. So, If they find you on Instagram, how do they do that? Uh, it would be Bubba underscore Crouch underscore Custom underscore Knives. Perfect. Yeah. I really appreciate it. You've got beautiful knives. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. And just another maker, a great example of someone who's doing handmade knives, doing it right, and providing you with the knives you need to pass down through your generations, your family. If you're looking for a multi-generational knife, definitely yes. So, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate we'll it. We'll be seeing you again soon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll do it. And on to the next. Hey, I'm here with James Burking. Burking, we've used Burking for years. If you go into our sharpening room right now, that's what we have. We have Burking. Uh, they make great grinders. I mean, solid, rock solid grinders. Um, and I tell you, they're, they're just the absolute best. When I was making knives, now I don't anymore, so don't start calling me looking for knives to be made. But when I was making knives, definitely, I was all about, all about Burking. Um, tell me, how did Burking get started? How did you get into the yes. knife business? 1951, Burking started. So we've been around a long time. About 20 years into that, a guy out in California, that's Burking started in California, came out to the shop and said, Mac, who was, ran the company, Mac, we need a machine for our people. And they talked a little bit, and it just happened to be a guy by the name of Bob Loveless. Everybody knows Bob famous, Loveless. Famous, famous right? Yep. And Bob turned around, and him and Mac started working together, and they came up with this knife making machine. A two by 72 machine, they wanted something smooth, mm -hmm. something that was reliable, something that was versatile something that just didn't vibrate, you know, and didn't have a lot of noise, that's what they were going up against. Mm -hmm. And Max says, we can do this. And that's where it was born. So since wow. early 70s, we've been producing a machine for knife making. Wow, and they are solid. They're rock yeah. solid. And grinding on them is just an absolute pleasure. And the 2x72 now, that size, when we say 2x72, it's a 2-inch wide belt by 72 inches long. It's become the standard in our industry. It's what we all use to grind at one point or another as we're making a knife. Right. So uh, really nice stuff. I tell you what, you want to make a quick run through the machines? I'll you get behind you. the camera. Fantastic. And uh, play cameraman for a minute. Yeah. And then uh, make a run through the machines. We'll see what, what they're all Let's about. Let's do it. All right. What do we have here? This is the 96272. This is yep. the machine that Loveless and McCarthy started building together in the early 70s. 2x72 two belt, we talked about that. This one has an 8-inch contact wheel. We can go a 10 inch wheel. We can take and add small wheels on there. This guy right here has a small wheel attachment. This one has inboard bearings. We have them with outboard bearings. Uh -huh. We can take and run. We got a vertical platen that we can put on there. We can even run our buffing wheels right on the front of this machine. Everything we do is this front wheel drive system. So we have a belt inside here that uh -huh. isolates the motor from here. So what that allows us to do is not have that vibration. We can isolate, the motor's got a little bit of vibration. We isolate that. If the wheel's got a little bit of vibration, we can isolate that. So the other nice thing is we sit on the end of the C-Face motor. If you've never seen this before, this is great. I don't need, I can take and rotate this header out. So I have a platen here that I can grind up against. I can flip it back here. I have the contact wheel I can grind against. So I can lock it in place, and all of a sudden, I can have that wheel up where I need to grind at. It's just the perfect way for somebody to take belly up to the machine, right? If this is too high, I can bring it back down. I can just, one bolt here, lock it in place. I have a work rest I can bring around. Lock it in there. Variable speed, I don't recommend anybody anymore getting a machine that doesn't have variable speed. The ability to turn this on and run it slow, you know, you're talking 600 surface feet there. Or be able to open it wide up, and turn it up so it's running 70 miles an hour. That is something. If you want to remove a lot of stock, if you're into stock removal, you know, you want to take and run this thing open. Profiling out, you do that. Motor actually takes and breaks itself. So we have DC injection braking on this machine as well. So there's a lot of versatility in this machine. Like I said, work rest. We have this set up on a pedestal. This is a fixed height pedestal on the BBA that you guys will see. It actually has an adjustable height pedestal. So this is our fixed height pedestal. We have a tool tray that can be added to it. Talk a little bit about this little guy here. It's a little wheel adapter. Nothing special, right? But because we drive off of this front wheel here, I can take the belt wheel off there. I can take the wheel off there, and I can take this little adapter, put it on the wheel, and run it in place of this. 
So now I have a variable speed buffer, run the scotch right wheels, buffing wheels, all of variable speed. That's a game changer right there. I took out a buffer with one machine. A lot of options, a lot of options. You know, I saw a surface grinding uh, attachment over oh, here. Oh, let's go talk about this option. This is something that came out by popular demand. This was a fantastic little addition. There were, honest with you, there was another surface grinder in the market, several of them. And uh, we've, this has been on our table for a while. We never thought there was much interest in it in the knife making side. But our industrial side really wanted something. Yeah. But they needed precision. They wanted something that could hold tolerances. Mm -hmm. You know, so we went table, kind of our skunk works division, you know, started playing with this little guy here. And we came up, this is a five axis surface grinder, which was really kind of cool. Five, it, axis. five axes. That's amazing. So what's really cool about it, we didn't use cheap low end. We went with linear bearings on there. So we have elevation, linear bearings. Underneath here, linear bearings. So this is our 12 inch version. I mean, it's solid. There's no flex to it. You're not going to get in motion. You're going to be able to hold that tolerance you need. So here's one. We also can go across the belt. So we'll go this way. We can go up and down with the table. We could go back and forth, pivot this way, the whole table. So if we want to do an edge grind, or we can take and actually pivot up the back end. So if we want to do distilled grinds, taper tangs, we can do that all in that one setup there. So it is a fantastic. What's really cool about this, it's modular. So you had a machine that was built 20 years ago, uh -huh. you can add this to it. Wow. So I don't know of what other company decides to build something and make it a modular system where we don't have to take and throw away our old machine and we can make it into this machine just by. Tell you what, when I was making knives, I would have given my right leg for this. People have given more for this. <laughs> no, so 12 inches, we have one that's 24 inches, uh -huh. and then we go all the way up to the mountain jammer right here. This is three foot of surface grinder. Oh my goodness. Little for hard swords. Hard. Look at that, swords, exactly right. Now, we don't have all five axes on here, yeah. but we can do edge grinds and we can get things fat. Yeah. Smooth. The first time we fired this one up, we had a Master Smith that we were working with on it. Fired up first time anybody really used it. Yeah. We were within a half thou over the corner on the 12 inches. We went wow. out over 36 inches and we were within three thousandths corner to corner. And nice. we'd never used the machine before. So, wow. you know, it's a lot of it's operator, but what sure. helps when you have the right machine. And we feel this is the right machine in combination for it. Wow, that's amazing. James, Richard, I really appreciate you showing us Burr King. It's a standard. What can you say about Burr King? When it comes to knife making, it's synonymous with Burr King right. grinders. Thank you very much for hey. showing us. I look forward to coming out and actually doing a video at your facility sometime You're here in the near welcome. future. Yeah, come we'll on have out. some fun, spend a couple days palling around. It's okay, it's a show. This is, this is live. Live, yeah. Live, live yeah, taping. It happens. Richard, <laughs> Thank you very again. much. Thanks. And we're back to the next one. I'm here with Brad with Knife and Gun Finishing Supplies. You know, there's a lot that goes into making a knife. And the knife makers can't do what they do. They can't make those beautiful knives unless they have the materials to do that. Very nice having me out to your booth. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. So tell me about how you got into this business and how long you've been doing it. It has been a family business since 1990. Um, my in-laws, my wife's parents, bought the business from a couple out of Arlington, Texas, which was named Knife and Gun at the time, and moved it to Arizona. Um, so we've had it since 1990 in the family, and my wife and I have had it for the last 13 years. Wow. So it's kind of been a family thing. Her father was a custom knife maker, mm -hmm. and so very familiar with the whole industry for quite some time. Really? Mm -hmm. I see you have a lot of slabs here, a lot of handle material. You know, you make handle material like this. This stuff is beautiful. I'm going to put it up here so you can kind of see here. I hope that's in focus. <laughs> uh, do you stabilize all your own, or do you, we, do you get it do, from the stabilizer? We do our own stabilizing. Really? We've been doing it for 30 years. This is very nicely stabilized, so, guys. Um, that's one of our main avenues of our uh, business, Yeah. besides the knife supplies. Mm -hmm. Stabilized slabs. People, so, yeah, people send it in to us, their wood, yeah. and we can stabilize it, dye it, and stabilize it. So, so you can do it either way. You mm -hmm. do your own, or they can send it to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. Knife makers out there, I know you all watch this channel. 
if you need stabilized woods. You can tell, I mean, you guys know, but you can tell just when you look at a piece of stabilized wood, whether it's been stabilized well or not. There's a lot of stabilized wood out there that's not done well. You can tell this is heavy stuff. This is done very nicely. That's beautiful. And your selection is tremendous. Thank you. Uh, you, you would do a lot more than just this now. What else do you have here on your tables? What do you do uh, you know, day in and day out on your website? Day in, day out. So our business is mainly a mail order online mm -hmm. store. But uh, all different types of uh, supplies for knife makers and just different options for handle material. We sell everything from heat ovens to grinders um, to all the little rivets, mm -hmm. epoxies, Corby's, all, Corby's, everything. All sort of polishing sheets, mm -hmm. um, everything you would need for a, you know doing a custom knife. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, you heard it here. Um, if they want to get hold of you, how do they, how do they find you? Knifeandgun.com on the internet. Knifeandgun.com. Knifeandgun.com. And that will give them all the information to call in or place an order online or to talk to us about sending their material in to be stabilized. Outstanding. Well, you heard it right here. Making knives. If you want to visit with us, of course, we're at bcknife.com. And if you want to visit Brad, I encourage you to do that. They have all the supplies you need. Brad, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Thank you. So I'm roaming around the Blade Show 2022, and who do I show up, who do I see as I'm roaming around? Border Town Blades, Chris Shires. Chris, Always great good to, to see, see you. you. Yeah. Who do we have here? This is my boy, Emery. I don't know if he made too many of the videos last time. I, I think he made, he, yeah, he made he it in He was swinging through trees, so you guys <laughs> can go back to when Ro Richard was in my shop and find Emery. You know, we, we have a video. Last year we did Border Town Blades. So you gotta go back and check out that video. We were there for a few days, a few actually. Days, yeah, yeah, it was great. We had a great time uh, out seeing that. Now, now you've, you've moved since then. I've moved, so we're now in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, we're getting established. I'm starting to build up my shop again, so we'll have to have you down. You can come see the thing. We got a, we got a private pond and a pool and- Wow. Yeah, it's very nice. So I would love to have you come over and spend time again. We will schedule that up Absolutely. and make that happen. I understand there's some exciting things happening for you yes. on the knife side. Probably don't want to talk about it yet. Yeah, we're still we're still navigating that that path, but yeah. um, there's definitely going to be some big things happening, both with Border Town Blades and with a side venture. So and you'll hear it here first. Oh, you will. You will definitely. Well, you've got a lot of blades out today. Why don't I get behind the camera? I'll get to the other side of your table. And maybe you could talk us through some of what you have out here today yeah. at the Blade Show for those people that are watching. Absolutely. Excellent. I'll be right back. All right, so now I'm on the other side of the table. Here's Chris over here and his son. And we've got all these knives here, all here at the Blade Show. By the time you see this video, Blade Show will be over, but you can always get in touch with Chris and get some of these or see us over at bcknife.com or come to the store there in Midland and uh, probably get some Border Town blades there too. But whatever we don't have, Chris does. And I encourage you to contact him directly. You can always get blades from him. So tell me, Chris, what do we have today? So we've got a few fishing knives. We've got a few kitchen knives. And then we've got our outdoor knives. So the big thing for me right now is my line used to be primarily 01 tool steel, and we've now since switched over to AEBL, so almost everything is coming out in stainless steels. Why do you like AEBL? It's easy to resharpen. It's a fantastic steel. It's got great corrosion resistance. It's super tough, and it's really consistent in hardness, and um, it's fairly easy to grind. The, um, I heat treat everything myself, so it works out really well for me to get a consistent, consistent workup of my blades. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I like AEBL as well. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a nice feel. Especially on the kitchen knives, it's been great. So, yeah. And I've got professional chefs in a multiple states who are using my knives, and it's working so that they like it. They can hit a knife on a steel a few times and hone it back to an edge and not feel like they have to take their knife in and have it professionally resharpened you know, every few months. Sure, so, sure. I like your kitchen knives. I've always liked the kitchen knives. We're doing a lot with this kind of a thing. Like these uh -huh. are maple burl with Macassar ebony. And then the pins, I hand make each pin. So they're stainless steel jacketed ebony pins. Wow. That's impressive. And then for sporting so, knives? 
and these are the sporting knives, so we've got everything, some drop points, clip points, and I've been testing out what consumers are liking uh -huh. the most as I've converted my line out of 01, so there's gonna be new styles coming out that will be available. This is probably my, mo my most popular knife, and you guys might have remembered this from that other video. We did sure. the Ironwood and Maple Burl for yep. Richard. So uh, we'll have to get some more of those going for you. Absolutely. And, you know, one thing I'll talk about is I've been doing my own Kydex. Recently, I had some Kydex put together by Armory Plastics. Yeah. Um, I didn't have time in the move to do these sheaths, and their work is amazing and I really want to give them a shout out because they went above and beyond to make sure that I was getting my product here for the Blade Show. Excellent. Um, I, I won't go into the extreme details as how far they went to get me my knives but their work <laughs> is impeccable and they've just done an amazing job. So we've got a lot to choose from here. Yes sir. I understand you've been selling a lot here at the Blade Show. We've had an amazing show. So. I'll, um, I've spent all my profits on stainless Damascus, so get ready for a whole lot of stainless to come out. But yeah, we've had an amazing response. We've sold a ton of fillet knives, um, quite a few hunting knives, and a couple kitchen knives. So we had a much better show than what I was planning. Excellent. Well, Chris, thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate all the information. You're doing great here at the show. You're selling a lot of knives, I can I've, tell. Yeah, it's been good. So I won't keep you any longer, but I expect to be down in Florida before long. Okay. As a matter of fact, I'm down there in a, another two weeks, I think. But, Is that your Sarasota guy? Uh, it's uh, Stevenson Blades, I Stevenson think. Stevenson Blades, yes. Them. I've talked to him. Oh, that's right. They, yeah. You guys know each other. That's a little right. bit. Yeah, yeah, he's a good guy. Well, I'll be out there, um, but you and I need to get together when you're ready. Okay. And uh, we'll see what you're doing, and I, I'm very excited. Good. So. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be big. So, Fantastic. We'll Porter take care Town of you, Blades. you take care of me. You, you got it. Right. Border Town Blades, Chris Shires. If you haven't seen the video on Border Town Blades, check it out when he was up in Blaine, Washington. Uh, and uh, we're going to be back with him a lot more, I can tell, in the future. He's got a lot of exciting things going on. Meanwhile, we're going to go check out the rest of Blade. We haven't even gotten to one little bit of it, and uh, we're running out of time. So we're going to go see who else we can find here. Thank you, Chris. All right, thanks, Richard. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And look who I run into, Jason Fry. Ah, good to see you, Richard. It's good to see you. You know, he's from Lubbock, which is just just he's north just of us. Just a little up the road. Yep, a couple hours north of us. And you probably uh, don't know. You, you know, but they probably don't know that Richard got me started in the knife show business. He invited <laughs> me to my very, very first knife show ever as a little baby knife maker. So I, I owe you, man. <laughs> well, it's my pleasure. I'm glad I could help. Well, Jason here has been making knives for quite a while. He's won a nice award down here. Tell me about what you won today. I, uh, I won the award for the best collaboration from the Knife Makers Guild, which is uh, really kind of intimidating yeah. <laughs> to me. Uh, my friend Alice Carter uh, did some engraving on a knife that I made that had some Damascus, and I set it up for her to, to draw on. Um, and we won the, the best collaboration. Oh, well, Alice Carter does, for those of you that don't Alice know. Alice does excellent work. Amazing work. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the knife engraving is the best. It's world yeah, class. very, very good. She's really good. And you make some amazing well, knives. So you. that's why you won the award. Well, and Alice drawed it up pretty good. It's you, too. it's her, <laughs> yes, sir. together. It's a great collaboration. Yes, sir. Thank you. And uh, you've earned it. Appreciate so it. congratulations on that. Thanks. That is a big deal. That's it is. a big deal. It is. You know, I think back to who else has won that award in the last 50 years. I mean, did Buster and Julie win that together? Did did Steve Johnson and Barry Hands win that together? You're on that list. And why am I on that list? <laughs> yeah. you know, the knife school, but geez, it melts my brain. It's cool. <laughs> it's a it's a great honor. It's a great honor. It is. It so is. how did you get into knife making in the beginning? I know we were the first show when right, we had that little right. show in Big Springs. It's right in the barbecue but, uh, place. Yeah. <laughs> but how, well, how did you get into it? Well, I started out really uh, skinning a lot of raccoons, yeah. and I wanted more knives. And so I just started making some because I had work to do, and I started sharpening all the time. Um, and then I built a little shop and started collecting tools and lost my job and moved away. And yeah. so about five years after that, I finally got the time back to, oh, yeah, I was going to make some knives, wasn't I? And I got back at it and uh, just kind of started messing with it. Made, a, made my first 19 with files, and then I made 150 with a little grinder from Sears. Yeah. And then it just went from there. Now, you know, now I'm 14 years in. It's funny that <laughs> knife makers don't realize that when we first get started, it's rough for everybody. Yeah. I mean, it's, nobody have nothing when you it's start. It's rough. <laughs> yeah, it's really rough. 
but after a while you get better and better at it. Mm -hmm. Now I don't make knives anymore, so I don't ask to get one of my knives because right, right. I don't make them anymore. And I was never that good to begin with. I was <laughs> nothing, nothing compared to you. Yeah. But you just kept going at it. You kept going at it. Yes, you kept sir. going at it. Now you're making some really beautiful stuff. Thank you, sir. And uh, I'm really glad we had a little, very little part of that. Hey. Uh, now you've done a collaboration with White River Knife and Tool, which I is have. another one of our I favorite have. manufacturers. Right. Right. Let's see one of those. And, and what you're doing with them. Get the orange one. All right, so after making 100 of this hunter right, over 14 years, I really started liking to make crazy stuff, right? And I only have so many hours with the family and things. Mm -hmm. So I thought, what if I found some good, trustworthy American manufacturing guys to make my knife for me? Yeah. I could lower the price point a little bit. Sure. Somebody could get a good knife that I had confidence in. It was my design. Get it into retail get stores. Get it into retail stores, mm -hmm. right? But I didn't have to make it. Yeah. So that's where we are. I mean, this is my hunter. Uh, some features, S35 VN stainless steel, of course. Which is amazing. Why not? Yeah. Right? Uh, some special contours uh, that, that match what I like in a knife. I mean, this is my knife. Yeah. Uh, little pinky hole there, so you can kind of move around and do what you're doing without losing track of your knife. Right? I mean, I know that's kind of silly looking, but when you're skinning a deer, it works very well. I mean, this is a knife that I developed over years of outdoor work. Yeah, it's a perfect size, and I have a lot of young people that come in and they want to buy a big knife for deer hunting. Yeah, and no, this is what all my professional much. hunters yes, get. Sir. It's this right here, if I yes, may. Yes, sir, of course. This has a great feel to it, has a, just the right weight to it, feels great any way you grab it, and it's, it's a well done knife. I mean, it's really nicely finished. So, I don't know if, you, if that's in in focus or not, but really <laughs> nicely done. Yeah, um, thank you. I could sell a bazillion of these, and we hope to I hope you do. <laughs> have some in stock by Christmas. We're working on it. We're working on it. We're working on it. They're hard to come by, yep. but man, if, if you want the perfect knife, perfect steel, I keep saying perfect. That's too but many perfects, but thank you. <laughs> that's what you're it is. You're generous with your perfection. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really nicely designed knife. So. So I'm looking forward to getting them in the store. We have them in a bunch of different colors. A bunch of different colors. A lot of handle material. Here's a new handle material that I've used here. It's called SureTouch G10 from Ultrex. Mm -hmm. It's got rubber and G10 together. So Let me feel. It's not the cheap rubber. It's not the hard G10. It's like the perfect combo of grippy and impenetrable. That's uh, cool. It, it just, it's great stuff. What's it's it called stuff. again? SureTouch from sure Ultrex. Touch. That is really yeah, neat. Great, great Guys, I wish you were here to feel this. That is great really material. cool. I, I'm dying to get this, man. I'm I dying would to love get you to have it. <laughs> we could sell so many of these in Bear Claw. All right, so you're going to have right. to stay tuned. Yep. We're going to we'll try and get can. some. We'll we're we're going to we try hard to get some in the store by Christmas. Yep. And of course, if you ever want to see what's in our store, you can come to bcknife.com. That's BC Knife, singular. Dot com, or you can come to our store in Midland, Midland, Texas, you know where we're at. And if they want to find you, they want to buy knives directly from right. you, see what you have in stock, yeah. or they want a knife made, right. who that would is, they call? That is, that's just me. It's Jason Fry, so frycustomknives.com. Don't make up some silly name. No, it's me, <laughs> frycustomknives.com. See, I can get you from there. So fryscustomknives.com. <laughs> yep. Fried, no Perfect. fries, only one. Fried. Frycustomknives.com. Fry. One yep. fry. One fry. Okay. <laughs> Jason, thank you, Richard. It's a pleasure. Sure, it's it. great seeing you again. Me I'm too. glad I ran into you here. Yeah, me too. It's, it's so big. I'm, I know. It's hard to find anybody. I, know. I was like, holy Jesus, my buddy. I didn't even know you were coming. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am. Yep. Hey, guys, I think that's going to do it for the Blade Show 2022 this year. It was fun being here. We've seen a lot of different people. If I didn't get to you, I'm sorry. I tried. It was hard to find anybody here. I, I mean, y'all have numbers, but they don't have numbers out, so I, I had a heck of a time finding anybody. So if I didn't make it to you, if I promised I would and then I didn't, I'm sorry. We're going to try and make it out to you next year, or we're going to come by your store this year and do a vlog right from your location. Until then, stay tuned to this channel. We're going to have lots of great knife makers coming up through the rest of this year. We're going to have a lot of fun. Very good. From Atlanta, Georgia, Blade 2022. Till next time.
boogers or anything? No, I got okay. a peppermint in. Let me crunch it down so I'll, you know, <laughs> I'll go little. peppermint. Uh, where'd you get that puppy? Right there. Oh, yeah. Bowl. Yeah, I'll be going over there here in a minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got the breath from hell talking all day. My voice is just crunch. It's just gross from is it? talking for a couple of days in a row, three. Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> fried. I'm ready to go home. Yep. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm going back to the store after this. Mm -hmm.